Hi, my name is Tina, and this is Knitting Blooms, episode 115. A long time in the making with outstanding results, Barmaids delivers yet another excellent skincare formula. Simple ingredients, quick absorption, it's a healthy skin choice. ICE Serum is the perfect daily nightly eye treatment. With nourishing and protective antioxidants, this lightweight formula absorbs easily into the skin to deliver stunning results. ICE Serum is a powerful combination of natural ingredients which encourages skin regeneration, leads to tightening and toned skin due to astringent qualities, and contains potent antioxidants which help to slow down the visible signs of aging. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm so glad you decided to spend your time with me. I know that there are lots of fabulous podcasts out there, so I really appreciate that you're taking the time to watch this one. Okay, so this is <laughs> this might be um, kind of a wacky podcast. Well, I wouldn't say wacky, but full of distractions, I can tell you that. Um, right now, I've got Sammy sitting on my lap. I don't know you. Pro I don't know if you'll be able to hear the dishwasher, but the dishwasher's going, and Steve is stomping around upstairs. The neighbor's mowing the lawn, so. <laughs> Distractions, ambient noise, hopefully it won't distract me too much and I can just keep going. <laughs> but um, I want to start by saying today that I changed the settings on my camera. So if you notice um, a huge decline in quality of the video, and you like how it looked before, let me know. Uh, I'm just trying something out to see how it goes, and I'm up to change it. I'm up, I'm up to go back to what we were doing before, but I'm just trying to make my uh, file size a little bit smaller. So um, I just want to say that out, out front so that you know you guys can let me know if you notice a difference. Also, um, before I forget, because I know somebody's bound to ask. I'm wearing my Hens Low. It's not really chilly here, but I was wearing a brown shirt today, and I'm not, I'm not one to wear dull colors. So, I just have the shawl just to brighten it up a bit. Um, yeah, so let's jump into everything else today. I want to start by um, thanking those of you who sent donations to the podcast this week. This week we raised um, $80 towards the $300 goal for the cost of the web hosting. And the people that sent money this week were Sally, Lisa, Corina, Sue, Anthony, and Sandy. So thank you all so much. It is so much appreciated that you guys care about the podcast that much that you're willing to send your hard-earned money to help pay for the hosting. And I promise to repay you guys um, with all my tutorials that I teach and all of that. And thank you, thank you so much again. Okay, so my week in review. Well, again, two weeks in review because I'm only recording every two weeks. The last two weeks are, have been crazy. If you watched episode number 113, which was the last time I recorded the podcast, I recorded on a Friday night, and we were having a very vicious storm come through the area. Uh, you might have heard some claps of thunder, the lights flickered um, once or twice, or I'm not, I think, I think just once. Um, but it was a really bad storm. Um, afterwards on Saturday, Steve and I were going through the neighborhood and there was trees down, or not, well, not, not trees, but large branches or branches down on every single road within my area. 
And I found out on Monday that we got called the office, because I work for a, um, a restoration contractor, we got called a number of times to go out and take, um, get rid of debris, take care of fallen trees, you know, tarp holes in people's roofs and whatnot. So the week after the podcast was so busy at work because we had all kinds of um, new claims that came in that we had to go out and write estimates and do temporary repairs and whatnot. It was crazy. And on top of that, my boss went on vacation this past week, so he's been gone all week. And so typically what happens when he goes on vacation is he like goes crazy trying to get everything, make sure everything's caught up before he leaves. I mean, like anybody does when they go on vacation, they want to be caught up so that they don't, you know, leave stuff lagging for the week while they're gone. So it was a crazy busy week, and I didn't get much knitting done that week at, at work. But then this past week, my boss was on vacation, we were all caught up from all the storms, and I got a lot accomplished. Now, I'm not going to show you everything today, um, because some things didn't get that much progress, but I'll kind of give you a rundown on them. So, that's been my week. And I have finally updated everything on the WordPress blog. All of the videos are updated. All of the um, videos are uploaded and linked on the blog. Now, um, if you follow my blog on um, bloomingknitter.wordpress.com, which is my original blog that I used to um, blog when I was just doing knitting, a knitting blog, I have also been posting the Knitting Blooms podcast over there. However, most the like the, my primary Knitting Blooms blog is knittingblooms.com. So knittingblooms.com is completely updated and everything. Knitting or bloomingknitter.wordpress.com. If you follow over there, not all of the videos are linked yet, but I will be working on that in the coming weeks. Same goes for the Knitting Blooms at Blogspot. Blogspot is where I used to have my blog before I had this whole thing with Blip. So, but if you're still following me on Blogspot, you can still do that because I'm still updating that blog. But again, not all the videos are linked over there just yet. And I have submitted my feed to iTunes. I have not heard anything from them. I think I submitted it on Tuesday. In fact... I might need to contact them because I have heard zilch, nada, nothing from them. Um, so I don't know if it's been updated or what exactly. But um, I did want to let you know that if you use Downcast or even if you use um, iTunes or another podcasting software or app on your phone, you can um, manually enter the feed from the knittingblooms.com website to get linked to be updated. So, if you don't want to wait for the iTunes update, you can manually enter the, um, the, uh, the URL, which is http colon forward slash forward slash knittingblooms.com forward slash feed forward slash. You can enter that right into Downcast as a manual entry and you you will automatically get updated when new episodes are posted. Again, I also um, post to Twitter and Facebook when, when I upload to the Knitting Blooms blog. So if you want to go ahead and do that, you can, or you can just wait and hopefully eventually the iTunes feed will catch up. Um, right now, I'm still on Blip, so I'm still uploading to Blip, although I can't, I don't, I think I still have to upload some things to Blip. I have to double check that, because I uploaded three tutorials to the WordPress blog this week, but I don't think I uploaded them to Blip yet, so I will need to do that. Um, let me just double check, because I don't think I did that. 
it's been it's been crazy, you know, trying to do all these different things. Yes, no, I have not uploaded the three tutorials. Now these are three tutorials that I previously had in episodes, so if you've watched all the episodes, you haven't missed out. But I wanted to get all of the episode or all the tutorials up on the WordPress WordPress site so that I could link them in the tutorials. So if you have any questions about how to do that manual linking in Downcast or in iTunes, just send me a PM or email me at knittingblooms.com. Cody. And I will help you out as best I can. I also want to remind you about the coupon code for Unique Designs, which um, is summer 2013. I don't know how long she's running that coupon code. So now I've got Sammy on my lap, and Cody wants to get on my lap, too. I don't think it's going to work out. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know how long she's running that coupon code. I would guess that it's probably through August, but I'm not 100% sure. But you can, it's for 10% off, and again, it's summer 2013, all caps. And you can go to her website, um, Unique Designs, which is U-N-I-C Designs at BigCartel.com to get 10% off of your order. And in my enabling, I will show you a new bag that I got from her this week. Okay, what I haven't worked on this week, the sock hair and blanket. It's inevitable. I worked on everything else. Well, not everything else, but a lot of stuff, but not the sock hair and blanket. I did not work on the vanadium either. In fact, the vanadium has been frogged. Yep. Last week, um, or the last time I recorded, I mentioned that I thought I might frog it and start the featherweight cardigan. And I think just by voicing my thoughts on that from the podcast, I think it kind of solidified it in my mind that that was what I was going to do. And I believe that it was on Sunday, after I recorded, that I frogged it. Maybe it was even Saturday that I frogged it and then re-wound the yarn on a um, Knitty Knotty so I could soak it and get it back to, you know, good yarn that's not kinked up. And I believe it was Sunday or Monday that I started the featherweight cardigan. Now, I'm not going to show you that sweater today because it's barely started. I think I maybe did maybe 10 rows on it. But I have to admit that I do like this sweater better with this yarn. With the vanadium, <coughs> excuse me, there was not going to be any um, collar, uh, like knitted on collar or uh, picked up where you pick up stitches and then you knit the collar or the button band. Everything was done from the top down and you included the button band or what was like the edging within your within your knitting. Now, now Cody's dropping this stuff off the the um <laughs> the hassock over here or whatever the ottoman. So, so you knit the collar ahead. You know when you when you first cast on, you knit the a garter stitch. You know to get that edging, and then when you knit down the front, you're also knitting that edging on as you go. Now. It probably works great with a more substantial yarn, but this particular yarn that I was using, which was the Integrity by CJ Kopeck, it was a lighter weight fingering, and I just don't think it was the right yarn for that project. But I did start the featherweight, and I like it so much better because after I knit the sweater, I, I'll pick up stitches and do the collar, so it will have um, a more substantial collar. Um, for that. But again, haven't gotten too much work on that. There's a couple other projects that, um, well, I'm not going to show you, but I'll mention them then when we get into knitting progress. I have some finished objects though. Last week I showed you my socks, and they're done. Finished. And there's my markers where I was last time, and I finished the cuff. Or the leg and the cuff. Just basic stockinette sock. These, this yarn was Fiber Nymph. This was the colorway 
and I think it was Let the Sun Shine Through. It was the special colorway she did for Knittopia 2013. And I love them. I haven't worn them. The ends still need to be woven in because I cast these off and then cast on another pair of socks almost immediately. I finished these last weekend and like I said, I cast on another pair pretty quickly after that. So those are done. All they do need to be is ends woven in and pictures taken for finished object. And then I started another pair of socks and they're done. These are done with um, Hill Country Instant Gratification and I want to say it's the cowboy colorway. If you really need to know, you can go to my project page, but this yarn is no longer available. It's been discontinued. In fact, the, the whole yarn company is gone. I don't know. I've been trying to order more yarn from them, and I have yet to be able to find out where they were. Anyway, they're done. Um, I did these toe up with my standard toe and everything, but I wanted to try a different heel. You know that I have my own short row heel, and I love the short row heel, but I wanted to try a different heel, and I wanted to do, do a tutorial on a toe-up sock with a heel flap. So I did a basic heel flap, um, and gusset for a toe-up sock, and I will be posting that tutorial at some point in the near future. Um, I'll get more into the tour tour tutorials when I get to that section. But they went really quick because this is almost a sport weight yarn. And they went super duper quick. I think I had them knit in like three days. Along with doing the tutorial and, um, you know, doing a heel that I'm not really all that comfortable with. So, um, these are not for me. These are going to be a gift for Christmas, so it's kind of like another um, pr project for Christmas in July. So, quick, quick knit with these um, sport weight socks. I usually don't do sport weight socks, but it was nice to have a quick knit. So, I really like this, this yarn, though. Um, all of the Hill Country yarns I loved. They had three, um, three fingering weight yarns or three sock weight yarns, and... I love them all. I have other socks that I've done in the instant gratification as well as the sweet feet and um, I'm just really disappointed that I won't ever be able to get any more of that yarn. So that's my second finished object and that's all my finished objects. Um, I also worked a little bit on the lace infinity scarf but I'm not going to show that to you today. Um, I sort of worked on the kitten, the, um, the simple crochet kitty that I was doing. Uh, last time I had finished the head, I needed to wait before I could seam it up, seam up the head um, until I got felt because I had to put the eyes in. Steve picked up some uh, felt for me and I put the eyes in and I seamed the head up, but that's all I got from there. Um, I started the featherweight as I already mentioned. Um, I started another pair of basic socks with, um, this time, cuff down with a heel flap because I want to do a tutorial on that. i um, not showing you those. And I started another pair of socks, which I will show you. It's been socks, socks, socks all the time. <laughs> it's because I've been, I've been knitting on these socks when I've been walking, so I've been trying to get in at least 15,000 steps. Um, every day, so I've been walking a lot. I started my watermelon socks. I love this yarn. When they first, be when this yarn first became popular, and this is the um, Knit Pearl Girl Abby. I can't remember who makes it, but um, but it's hand. It's um self-striping sock yarn that's like in a watermelon colorway. But I bought this yarn a couple years ago and I'd have to check my Ravelry to see if I even was posting when I purchased something. Um, but I bought this a while ago and it's been sitting in my stash for at least a year. Maybe two. 
but I finally decided to cast them on, and I love them. I did my regular um, basic sock with my toe and a short row heel, my short row heel, and it's just fabulous. I am only doing one sock at a time. I know, I always do two at a time, where I put them on separate needles, but I didn't want to break the skein up because I know I never use all of the yarn when I do socks. And I have toes, heels, and cuff for the green. So I didn't want to break the yarn up because I, I, I didn't know how much I was going to use of the self-striping. And I didn't want to have all these pieces when I was done. I would rather have one final ball when I'm done. So I kept it all as one ball, which means I have to knit the whole sock, um, toe, foot, heel, leg, cuff, before I can move on to the next sock. Um, which is fine because I love this yarn. It is so much fun to see the uh, watermelon pattern emerge. So I'm just enjoying it, and I'm thinking I might have to order me another... Uh, another skein of this because what happens if I lose a sock or what happens if I wear a hole in them I don't know we'll have to see but I love the green too I like I like the green I actually got the green um, color and the red color because I couldn't decide which color I wanted to use for the heels and toes but obviously I went with the green so I love it so far it's been fabulous knit. I st actually started these out on, on size zeros. I'm sorry, size double zero. And because the yarn kind of felt a little thinner, but I decided that I thought that it, the double zeros were too small, so I went up to a size zero, and I like it so much better. Um, I really think that the zeros are my go-to sock, um, sock needles. So... So those are my knitting progress. Um, oh, I have one more, one more to show you. I have the Coraline to show you. And I have made significant progress on the Coraline, which is being knit in my um, silky wool yarn that I dyed. And I have added the sleeves. The sleeves are attached. And I have started the pattern. Just barely. I think I have five rows done on the pattern. Um, so, yeah. It's coming right along. Uh, let me show you where I was. Probably already saw that marker. The uh, orange marker down there. The pink markers were where I was... Um, these pink markers are where I was using to do the raglan decreases. But the orange marker is where I was. And I had a, about another inch or so... Uh, a couple, no, actually, more like two and a half to three inches of the body before I could add the arms. And then I added the arms. So that is coming right along. I'm really enjoying it. Like I said, silky wool is, I believe, probably my favorite yarn. Um, and now that I, I've said this before, now that I can do this over dye technique and get this um, very subtly variegated yarn with the silky wool, I will be looking for bargains of silky wool everywhere. Any light color of silky wool, I will be looking at. Um, in fact, with Stitches Midwest, I will probably look there because I bought this yarn that I dyed at Stitches Midwest two years ago. So, very excited about it. Um, I think I made the body... Um, 15 inches or 15 and a half inches. Um, I don't think the pattern calls for it that long, but I like my um, sweater a little bit longer. I'm hoping it won't backfire because a lot of times when I do make the sweater a little longer, sometimes it's I make it I go overboard and I make it too long. But sometimes when I make it the exact length then I'm disappointed because it's not long enough. So I'm hoping that I didn't go overboard and it's going to be perfect. I don't think this is going to be done in time to wear to Stitches Midwest next week, but I might take it with me depending on how easy I'm finding the pattern to be. 
um, because I know that there's going to be lots of knitting time at stitches and if I find that the pattern's easy enough to knit in a group, then I'll bring it along with me. So those are my knitting, um, my knitting progress this week. Spinning. I'm kind of going to go um, fly by the spinning real quick because although I have been spinning uh, for the last couple weeks, um, it hasn't been as much as I was spinning during Tour de Fleece, but I have been trying to spin at least... I don't know, 15, 20, 30 minutes a day. There's been some days that I haven't quite done that, but then I've tried to make it up the next day by spinning for an hour. Um, I started plying, doing a Navajo ply on that blue that was left over, um, the, the last bit, uh, third of the blue and the leftover from the blue. In fact, I re recorded a Navajo plying tutorial, again, um, that will come up in the future, if I like how it turned out, because... I like to record it, and if I'm not happy with it, I'll take the time to record it again. So I haven't actually had a chance to look at that tutorial to see how it turned out. But if it turned out well, then you'll be seeing a Navajo Ply tutorial in the near future. But the one thing that I am going to show you this week, because I didn't show it to you last week, is my loop bat. Here's the bobbin. It's got a little bit of sparkle in it. It is the Wildflowers Colorway. And let me just show you what I haven't done yet. It started with, now I've forgotten what it started with. I think it started with a dark, dark purple. And then it transitioned into a lighter green, which you'll kind of see here. And then the darker green, that's, uh, it's, I'm in the blending stage of the darker green and the lighter green. Then it goes to the darker green. Um, it looks like, that's um, a large section then then to like a kind of periwinkle blue and then a violet and it looks like there's a little bit of teal in there as well and then to a um a darker violet so it's coming right along this is merino and because i've been spinning the polar silk so much it's been kind of a struggle for me to spin the merino because the merino is a shorter staple length and um, because of how this fiber is prepped, it's a little stickier than the polar silk. So it has taken me a bit to get comfortable with it, which is why when I sit down to this, I like to spin for at least a half an hour because it takes me a little bit to get kind of comfortable with it again after spinning the pole or silk. But I'm enjoying it. It's coming along. It's going to take a while. This is like a five, it's a five and a half ounce um, bump. Nope. There's my timer again. I need to remember to uh, turn that off. Turn that off. Um, uh, so yeah, so it's coming, coming along. I am still spinning uh, the wool gatherings on the uh, golden spindle. Uh, haven't really spun that much on that in the last couple weeks, but every now and then I'll remember about that. And um, again, I am spinning the uh, Fiber Nymph, the semi-solid purple from Knittopia, the semi-solid purple that was custom dyed from Knittopia. Um, I am almost done with the third, with the second part of the third braid. So that's coming along. So I've mentioned Stitches Midwest a couple of times, and guess what? It's next weekend. Um, actually, I will be there at this time next week. I'm so excited. We are arriving late Thursday night. Um, we probably won't get on the road until probably around 5 o'clock, so it's probably going to be you know 10 or 11 o'clock before we get there. But that's okay. We'll be able to check into the hotel, get a good night's sleep, and then be able to get shopping first thing Friday morning. And I am planning on being at the podcaster meetup that is going to be held on Friday. Um, I think that it's like 1230. I can't remember the exact time. But I am planning on being there. But if you are not going to be there or can't make it to the podcaster meetup and would like to meet up 
at another time. I've had a few people contact me. Uh, one person contacted me and said, oh, do you want to go for a walk? You know, you're getting in your steps and we could, we could do a cardio session together, which is great. I'd love to do that. Um, and so just contact me if you'd like to meet up. I, I am open for any and every time, <laughs> you know, there's going to be meals, there's going to be walking sessions, there's going to be just sitting and knitting, you know, just don't be shy to contact me. I can tell you that I am a shy person uh, when I first meet somebody, so one of us is going to have to be not shy. <laughs> and because you know who I am and I don't necessarily know who you are, please feel comfortable to come up to me and just say hello or PM me and say you want to meet up with me, whatever. But just just do it. You know, if you're going to be there and you'd like to meet up, just contact me. I'd love to meet up with everybody who is interested in, um, in meeting up with me. And then there's Knitting in the Mitten in November, which is coming up on November 7th through 10th. And that's going to be quite exciting. So those are the upcoming events. And then the next VKN, because, um, okay, we're going to have a little fight over here. Sammy, be nice to Cody, please. You want to come back over here? Okay, be good. Because I'm going to be at Stitches Midwest next Saturday, there will not be a VKN next Saturday. Because I told you last week, or two weeks ago, that I was going to do VKN on the weeks that I didn't record the podcast. But because I am going to be at Stitches, there's no VKN next week. So if you're going to Stitches, we can have our a real knit night at Stitches. So the next VKN will be... Um, on the 24th of August because the next time I record will be like the 16th or 17th or something there about and then the next time the next off week will be the 24th of August however I may do an impromptu VKN sometime between the 16th and the 24th I can't promise anything but I will post it in the group if I do and um, also if you are a if you're in my circles or whatever, um, if you follow me, I don't know how it works because I know that there's a lot of people that put me in their circles, but I don't necessarily have you in my circle. But I think that if you follow me and I mark it as public, you should be able to see it. If you want to uh, make sure that you get invited to a VKN, if I happen to have one impromptu, just check the thread. Um, in the Ravelry group, although if it's impromptu, I might just decide at 7 o'clock on a Saturday night or whatever day that I'm going to do it. Um, yeah, let me know if you've gotten the, 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 um, the invites if I am not, if you are not in my circle. That'd be interesting to know. So again, the next one will be August 24th. Okay, I have a bit of stash enhancement to show you. But before I show you that, I want to show you the additional prizes that I promised you that I would show you uh, for the Christmas in July. The first prize that we have that was donated by a fabulous viewer named Laura is this uh, Fearless Fibers in, what's the colorway here? Redwood Grove, but it's red and green, so it's very Christmassy. So, thank you, Laura, for donating this prize to the Christmas in July Knit Along. That is very safely wrapped up in this bag right here. And then another viewer, whose name is Judy, also sent a Christmas colorway for the um, Christmas in July Knit Along. And it's from Gnome Acres. And this colorway is called Tis the Season. Again green and red. So thank you Judy for sending that and Judy sent me a fabulous little prize of my own and she sent me this fabulous colorway green, pink, and black and it's from CJ Knit. Oops. It's her lime, pink, and licorice. 
So again, Judy, thank you so much for this. I had planned on um, casting this on after I finished my Knitopia socks, but then I wanted to do those tutorials, so I wanted to get those done first. But as soon as those other socks, the tutorial socks are done, um, I am pretty sure that I'm going to be winding this up and casting it on. It's going to be awesome. I'm not sure if it's a self-striping. I'm guessing that it's a self-striping, but I'm not 100% sure because it doesn't really say. But it could be self-striping or it might be variegated. But either way, it's going to be some awesome socks. So, Judy, thank you so much for doing that, for donating a prize to the Knit Along and also sending me a little prize along with it. It's very much appreciated. So let me tell you what I got this week. I got some prizes, and actually some of these came in, I think even before the last time I recorded, but it was too busy crazy. The first one is, of course, my Into the World Club for July. This is Merino Silk. I am in the Lux Club. It's Merino Silk, and it's these blues and greens, a little bit of purpley blue, and although these colors are not my typical, the colors that I would typically gravitate to, I like getting stuff like this um, in a club because it will take me outside of my box a little bit, just a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. It's, it's a merino silk, which I love, and so even if these are not my typical colors that I typically use, it will be enjoyable to spin, and I'm sure somebody will love a project knit from this once I spin it up. So that's my Into the World Club. And then I got something from uh, the Wayward Sheep. I'm pretty sure that's where this is from. Sorry for all the, the crinkle crinkle. Yes, the Wayward Sheep. I was on um, the Tour de Fleece boards, and I saw a link to her um, site, and I happened to head on over there, and I saw this colorway. How could I not get this colorway? Not possible. So this is BFL and Silk. Um, again, I mostly like the, the Polar Silk, but I'm guessing that BFL Silk will be very similar to Polar Silk. And the this is a fabulous colorway. I don't know, does she have a colorway name? No colorway name, but I don't know. But it's obviously my colors, and I got two braids of four ounces. Actually, they're 3.4 ounces each. Um, 100, 100 grams. So, very nice. I got two because 3.4 ounces really isn't quite enough. And, you know, 6.8 ounces, that's probably good. And then she also sent a sample of 100% um, Tussa Silk. So, that'll be interesting to spin up. It's very silky. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> it's, it's almost like... I touch, you know how you, you touch something and it's like, it's very soft, but it almost gives me the feel of like cringing when I touch it, like almost like nails on a chalkboard. I don't think it's going to be like that to spin it, but it just, it kind of has that, that sort of feeling. Anyway, I received those two. I haven't put those on my project page yet. And then what else is in the bag that I got? I received my um, completely twisted and arbitrary order from this um, next round. I haven't. I've only spun the, the the one that I've spun so far. I've I think I've ordered almost every time, and every time since I joined the group. And the into the world, which is the the blue, the green, and the variegated that I've been working on. I think that was the first thing that I purchased from them, from, from that group, uh, when they did, into, when Into the World was their dyer, and that's all I've spun. But this time, um, Fat Cat Knits, Fat Cat Knits, yeah, 
was the Dyer of Record. And this was one of the colorways. This is Come Together. And it's the um, the completely twisted and arbitrary September or July through September 2013. I ordered the guess what? Polar silk. <laughs> Because I love it. And uh, I just thought it would be very interesting. It's got all these bright, bright colors and then a little bit of black and some darker colors too. So it'll be very interesting. I've started to see people, they've already started um, spinning theirs up and it looks kind of cool. But, oh, and I also got the six ounce um, option. What I like so much about Fat Cat is she does offer a six ounce, a six ounce, bleh, can't speak tonight. A six ounce option which is awesome because sometimes four ounces is not quite enough and eight ounces is a little bit too much so I got the six ounce and then since I was placing that order I decided to place another order because I was on the website a few weeks ago and I saw this colorway and I'm like hmm that's kind of nice but then I saw that uh, they were gonna be the dyer for completely twisted and arbitrary and I was waiting for the colorways to come out but this one I ordered also. This is her um, Magnolia, I believe. Yeah, Magnolia colorway. And you've got the pinks and the green, the pinks and the oranges and the yellows at the top. And then the darker colors of the burgundies and the greens, the darker greens at the bottom here. So that is going to be so cool to spin up as well. And you guessed it, Power Silk again. Love it when I can get Power Silk. I mean, I. Honestly, I would be happy to spin polar silk all of the time. Now, granted, it's sometimes nice to try different fibers and stuff like that, but I would be very happy to spin just polar silk all of the time. Oh, Sammy's going to have a little episode over here, and I'm probably going to have to pause so I can clean up the mess. So, just a moment, please. Okay, back to stash enhancement, so to speak. I don't know what it is with the cats and the puking. Um, I think she drinks too much water and then she pukes. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the food that she is upsetting her stomach, so then she goes and drinks too much water and then she pukes. I don't know. Anyway, I got myself some new project bags this week. Not that I really need any more project bags, but... Um, as you know, the Christmas in July um, knit along is being done with Denise from the Knitting Den. And she has an Etsy shop that she puts bags in. And her um, website is Kikaboo Bags. And you can go and order some bags from her. Oops, there's the website down there at the bottom here. And her bags are awesome. So in honor of our Christmas in July, I decided that I needed to go and order. Huh? I don't know what it is. Mac and cheese. No. <laughs> Steve made macaroni and cheese and he was coming down to ask me if I wanted some. Anyway, um, in honor of our knit along, I decided I have not ordered any of her bags, so I wanted to go and give her bags a try. So I ordered this one. It's pink and brown. Here's her little, she's got a little um, tag here. And I believe this is one of her squishy bags, which I like because um, there's no interfacing or anything. They're really they're really soft and you can put your project in there and it just will go, you know, scrunch down if it needs to. But I love it. It has a nice um, square bottom or good sized bottom to it. It's a great um, sock bag and it has a little handle, which is awesome because when I walk and knit, I like to have a little handle on my bag so that I can... Um, carry it like that. Sometimes I'll use the, the drawstring, but it's not as convenient as having its own little handle. 
So go and check out her her uh, her Etsy shop. And she also sent with the bag these cute little handmade tags. So isn't that cute? I don't know where she got the stamp. I'll have to uh, see if I can find it. Because you know I do stamping. And then, like I mentioned before, unique designs with the coupon code. I saw this bag on Sock Bunny Knit and Fit. I think um, it was donated to for the um, Sock Stravaganza. And I'm like, I want one of those bags. <laughs> and then I got lucky because I went to her website and she had one in the website. So I ordered it. It's a Paris bag. It's got pink, it's pink and black, and inside is uh, black with pink dots. It's very nice. Now this one is a little different than the one that I got before. The one I got before had some nice, some stiff interfacing in it. This one is more of a squishy bag, which is great because I love them also. Um, but yeah, it's awesome. I, I don't know, they were the same price, the two different bags, the one that I originally ordered and this one. So I don't know if she just changed the way she was doing the bags or if the one, one of the two that I got was um, like a prototype or something. But I love it. And it's got sparklies on the um, Eiffel Towers. I don't know if you'll be able to, yeah, you can probably catch that. The sparklies. Very cool. So I got two new project bags which I really didn't need any new project bags, but it's always fun to get new project bags. So that's my enabling for this week. Okay, now for the drawings. In fact, hang on a second, because I think I forgot to mark one of them as closed. Let me just double check. Because um, we have lots of drawings today. We have... Um, Tour de Fleece. We have the Knitter's Pride Carbons. And we have an iTunes comment. So let's start with... Are you going to sit on my stuff over here, mister? Cody's still over here. Alright, so let's start with the Knitter's Pride. We had quite a few entries into that thread, which I'm very happy to see. Um... Let's see how many people. I think it was like 100 and something. 150 something. 152 um, entries into the, um, the Knitter's Pride. And it goes to number 146. <coughs> Excuse me. VF Knits. And that's Veronica. So congratulations, Veronica. You are the happy owner of the new carbons needles. So just get in contact with me and I will get these in the mail to you as soon as possible. And then we have the Tour de Fleece. And uh, we have four prizes because I decided to grab one more prize. We're going to start with the CJ Kopec fiber, which is this. And I've already drawn these numbers because we had 500 and how many entries did we have? 578 posts. However, um, a lot of that was chatter. So it took me a while. What I did was I drew a bunch of numbers, put them in order, and then went and checked out each number and then um, plugged it into the prize as I went. So this first prize goes to number 26. And that's mom to boys. And that's Laura. So it's the green and the blue and the tan. I believe it is four ounces, but I'm not 100% sure. I think, it, I think it's four ounces. So, Laura, congratulations. Everybody contact me, um, either a PM or an email or whatever works for you. The next prize is the... Um, Dripping Studios balls. I think there's four of them. They're the bats. And these are so beautiful. I just did not like spinning them. 
I would, I'd love to see what gets spun up with them. In fact, really, I really liked how it turned out when I actually took what I did spin off of the bobbin, but I didn't enjoy the actual spinning part, so, yeah, it's just me. So the winner of this prize goes to number 532, Mommy Debbie. And I got to meet Mommy Debbie last weekend when we met up with um, Shannon, who is uh, Snowstein from the Knit Sip podcast. She was in town in Troy, Michigan uh, last weekend uh, for um, a test that she had to take for her job. And I contacted her. I said, let's meet up. And then we ended up making it a whole big knit day. So it was fabulous. So I got to meet Debbie for the first time. And um, so awesome that I can, she now wins a prize from Tour de Fleece. So I, I met her for the first time on Saturday. So that was so much fun. So Debbie, contact me and um, I can, we can meet up and I can deliver them. Or if you come into club or something, then just let me know. And the next prize is this one. Oh, I have, I have another, another prize in here. Oh, I'll just wait for that one for next time. I forgot about the other one that I had in the bottom. The next prize is this braid of fiber, which is by Hambly. And this is 100 grams. It's made in England. And this is, oh, and let's see what, um, it's Falkland. This goes to number 138, Dragonfly 7673, and that's Vicky. So, Vicky, you win this, and guess what? I get to go see Vicky next weekend at Stitches Midwest. So, Vicky, I'm going to bring this with me. I'm hoping that you see the episode before Stitches Midwest, but I'm going to bring it with me so I can give it to you while we're there. That way I can save a little bit on the shipping for that. So, Vicki, congratulations. You get this wonderful prize from participating in Tour de Fleece. And the last prize, which was kind of a last-minute addition, um, and it's because I picked up the bag with all the prizes, and underneath it, I saw this. This is the um, Knittopia Custom Colorway from Fiber Nymph. And I had an extra braid, and I'm going to give it for Tour de Fleece. And it goes to number 115, and that's Wisdom. So, and you know what? I didn't write down what her first name was. So, anyway, Wisdom, <laughs> you win the um, custom colorway from Knittopia. It's very pretty, and I can't wait to see it spun up. So, you'll have to make sure you PM me when you spin it up. So, congratulations to all of you for participating in Tour de Fleece, and if you won a prize, I know that um, everybody who participated in Tour de Fleece got a lot of spinning done. So I know I did. I was very impressed with my own personal spinning goals, and um, so yeah, I will definitely be doing Tour de Fleece next year as well. And the last prize for today is the iTunes comments. Now I mentioned two weeks ago that I'm going to start drawing once a month for iTunes comments for a price of $7, um, a, a Ravelry pattern of $7 or less. So <coughs> what I did was I went through all of the um, entries on um, iTunes for the U.S., Canada, and I believe the UK. And I wrote down all of them in a spreadsheet with the date that they were posted. And I didn't write down the comment. That was just too much for me to, to deal with. But what I did was I put them all in a bag here. And I'm going to keep this bag and just continue to add um, names to it as new names get posted. Each time there's new comments, they get posted to um, to iTunes, then I will add them to this bag. See, I put iTunes comments. Well, almost comments. I ran out of white space. So, like I said, I took all of those those um, comments. Now, if you have put a comment and 
into iTunes for the for the podcast. And you live somewhere other than the U.S., Canada, and the U.K., you have to contact me and tell me. I put a comment in for um, whatever country it was, so I can go and look at the comment and then add your name to the list. So, all the names are in here. You will stay in here until you win, or until I stop doing the drawing. <laughs> um... So if you've put a comment, everybody all the way back from the very beginning, from May 2011 when I started the podcast, whatever comments are in there for iTunes, you are in this drawing. And again, all of the names are in here. They're just on little sheets of paper. And I'm just going to draw a name. And that's how the drawing is going to work. And then, like I said, I will just keep this um, little bag and... Um, Draw a name each month. The first podcast of the month will be the drawing. So here we go. Here's the drawing. One sheet. And it goes to Knit Gal 2. So if you have your... Um, if you entered this comment that was done by Knit Gal 2, then contact me and let me know which pattern you would like on Ravelry. Because iTunes, I have no way to contact you, and I don't know for sure if this is your Ravelry ID or not, you guys are going to need to contact me. So I will make a note that you have won the $7 or less giftable pattern on Ravelry. Just contact me and say, that was... Excuse me. Sorry. Sammy was trying to get in the prizes. Contact me and say, that was your comment, and I will get your pattern off to you. The next thing that's coming up, <clears throat> we're going to have another bottom raise drawing. That will be done on 8-16, August 16th. And it's going to be for a $15 gift certificate. I'm going to try and remember to post the, to post the thing to the group. But... The last time I forgot, and it was very nice when somebody reminded me. So if I forget to post the barmaid's drawing, please contact me, PM me on Ravelry, whatever. Poke me something. Get my attention. And I will put it up. Uh, but it is going to be for $15 coupon, and the drawing will be on the 16th. And also, I have another drawing. And actually... I'm going to put it off for now because I wanted to bring over one of the bags and show, show you guys. We've got Sammy and Crystal down here now. And everybody's had a snack, so I don't know what the deal is with them. But I do want, I have some other prizes that I want to give out, but like I said, I meant to bring one over here to show you what was going to be in the, bo the bag. Um, but I'm going to wait till next time, so just stay tuned till the next episode. Um, the next recording episode uh, for some other big prizes that are coming up. So again, congratulations to everybody who won a prize this week. There was lots of them. I already mentioned our knit along that's going on right now, which is Christmas in July with Denise from the Knitting Den podcast. Uh, but I did want to remind you that you have until August 16th, actually, I think I have I have here runs till August 15th, and then the drawing would be held on the 16th or 17th, depending on uh, when I record. Lately, I've been recording on Fridays, so if I record on Friday, then that's when I'll do the drawing. If I record on Saturday, obviously, I'll do the drawing on Saturday. And I will lock the thread when I've done the drawing. Um, there's the four prizes. I just showed you the um, two skeins of yarn, and then we have two... Um, Christmas project bags as well. So get those things posted. We've gotten quite a few um, entries so far. Let me just take a quick look how many we've got so far. Actually, only 95. So you have a really good chance of winning with four prizes. So get on out there, get your Christmas knitting started, and get your stuff posted by the 16th, well, let's say the 15th of August. Tutorials. Now, I've mentioned several times um, during this episode about the upcoming tutorials. This week, I went tutorial crazy. 
I recorded three tutorials and I started three more. So like I said before, I like to watch the tutorials, watch what I've recorded to make sure I like that the like how it came out, if the information was clear, um, if it's not too haphazard. I recorded a drop spinder tutorial um, for plying a while back and I just watched it back um, this week and I was not happy with that tutorial at all. So I will have to re-record that tutorial and hopefully uh, provide a bit more information than what was provided in what I did record before. I don't know I don't know what I was doing before, but um, yeah, it was not not very informative at all or very well done. I was I think I was distracted. I must have been distracted that day. Anyway, that's why you've never seen that tutorial. But like I said, I have I recorded three this week. I think it was three. Um, and I have three more that are in progress working on um, swatches and whatnot. So oh, there's going to be lots of tutorials coming up. So let me know if there's any that you would like to see. And um, I will add them to the list. And that's all I've got for you this week. Thanks so much for joining me. You can always reach me on Ravelry as Blooming Knitter. You can, via, you can email me at knittingblooms at gmail.com. The show notes are at knittingblooms.com. I also update to Twitter and Facebook directly from WordPress when I post a new episode. You can find me on Fitbit as Miss Aerobics and also on MyFitnessPal as Miss Aerobics. Um, I try to remember to post to Plurk and Google Plus when I post an episode, but mm, I don't always remember that. And, uh, yeah, so, again, that's all I've got for you. Hope you have a great week. I will see you either at Stitches next week, or I will see you in two weeks. Actually, I'll still have an episode, a tutorial next week, but I'll talk to you in two weeks if I don't see you at Stitches. So, bye for now.